the place for those who lust for high position was not found in not because there was a shortage of accommodation the place of that mindset was not found in heaven Shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah. I'd like to greet you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me repeat that. I want to greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm so grateful to the Lord for bringing me into South Africa, Johannesburg, in this particular church to share the word of God with my brothers and sisters who are awaiting the second coming of Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm also reminded tonight that uh, there are people who are watching this telecast uh, in a number of countries. They tell me over 20 countries have access to Isambolo TV. So we'd like to greet our brothers as well in um, uh, Uganda, the DRC, uh, in Botswana, Namibia, Zambia, Zimbabwe, um, Malawi and many other places like Mozambique. I want to thank God for Isambolo TV. God has used them to create a platform for reaching out to many nations. What do we say, my brothers and sisters? Amen. Let us keep praying for them that God may give them more ideas to advance the word of God. Um, we have an exciting topic today. We carry on in the same vein as yesterday. The overall theme or topic, the sinister practice of church politics. But the subheading for today, I'm going to focus on Judas Iscariot and the three angels' messages. The life of Judas Iscariot was written in the Bible to serve as a warning to the end time church. Amen. Amen. That each person who studies the word of God is not supposed to be ignorant concerning the life of Judas because we, may, we are in danger of walking in his footsteps. I'm going to show you how Judas came into the ministry to be a gospel minister. Was he called by God or somebody campaigned for him? The Bible says, I'm going to give you shepherds after my own heart. Amen. I will give you shepherds. I will give you leaders after my own heart. Today, when we don't obey God and allow him to do what he promised, we may provide leaders after our own hearts, not after God's own heart. And when, when they come into the circle of positions of responsibility at whatever level, they will tow the line of Judas. It is very important then, brothers and sisters, that we may not act like we are wiser than God in the selection of church officers, church leaders. Amen. Give the Holy Spirit his role to lead and guide. Uh, the process of church politics, wherever it is found, has resulted in people being smuggled through the nominating committees to positions which God never meant for them. Amen? Amen. I know my brothers in Uganda are listening to this. My brothers in Mozambique are listening to this. And wherever the Advent Church is, they are listening to this. God bless you out there. Wherever there is church politicking, people are smuggled through the nominating committees to land in positions that God never meant them to be there. And you will know them by their what? Fruit. As, Jesus, as Judas betrayed Christ, today we have brothers and sisters in our local church boards in different places who are betraying the cause of Christ, even the three angels' messages. In some congregations, it is now rare 
you hardly hear a sermon on the three angels' messages. Are you with me? Why? We are going to discover today. Let me walk you through a number of quotations in the Spirit of Prophecy books. One of my favorite books there being The Desire of Ages. That book blesses my soul. Real Adventists believe in the spirit of prophecy. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Real Adventists believe in the writings of the spirit of prophecy. Now I read, how did Judas Iscariot join the gospel ministry? The other disciples, we read in the word of God that Jesus saw them somewhere fishing and he said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and they followed. They were called. Listen to this comment. Desire of Ages, page 293, paragraph 2. While Jesus was preparing the disciples uh, for their ordination, there was an ordination service, one who had not been called urged his presence among them. One who had not been called by God, who had, not, who had not received the calling. Are you with me? Edged his presence where this ordination was about to take place. I believe there were 11 disciples that Christ was about to ordain. And somebody came forward and summoned. It was Judas Iscariot, a man who professed to be a follower of Christ, he now came forward soliciting a place in, in this inner circle of the disciples. With great earnestness and apparent sincerity, he declared, Master, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. Jesus neither repulsed Judas nor welcomed him. Did you hear that? Jesus neither repulsed Judas nor welcomed him, but uttered only the mournful words, the foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no way to lay his head. Judas believed Jesus to be the Messiah, and by joining the apostles, he hoped to secure a high position. In the new kingdom, this hope Jesus designed to cut off by the statement of his poverty. Say, may I join you? Judas was, never received a call to be an apostle. He never received a call to be a pastor. He never received a call to be an elder. Are you with me? God, I believe, had a place for him somewhere, not in this circle of apostleship. But he came by himself. Are you with me? Brothers and sisters, it is good for you to occupy that position which God has meant for you. Do not be like Judas Iscariot. To urge yourself, to campaign yourself, am I right? To church politic yourself into a position which God never meant for you. That's why this story was written, the story of Judas. When Jesus shall come and say to some brothers in the remnant church, depart from me, I never knew you. It is because men edged themselves into positions which God never meant for them. Are you with me? The Bible says, I know the plans I have for you, Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you. Amen? God has a plan for your life. He knows where you fit in his church. Amen? Do not aspire for what he has not planned for you. If everybody believed that God has a plan for him or her, Nobody would be involved in the business of politicking uh, and aspiring or lasting for particular positions. Amen? Amen? When people pray in those nominating committees, the outcome would be accepted by humble people. Amen? Amen? The will of God would be revealed where each one of us fit in the plan of God. But today, many people like Judas are in wrong places and they will share the fate of Judas. Amen? Are you where you are by the will of God, 
or you are there by human design. Judas came because his eyes were focusing on a high position. Did you hear that? That is why he joined the ministry. That is why he came to be an apostle. Are you with me? Christ taught his disciples and spelled out his mission to them. The Son of Man is not come, I mean, the Son of Man is come to see, is come to seek and save that which was lost. Therefore, come, I will make you fishers of men. So all the eleven knew why they were called. Amen? Amen. To seek for souls. Judas was a pastor or an apostle or an elder with another mission. A mission not to seek and save the lost. Are you with me? Is it possible that you could be an elder or a deacon or a church member with another mission different from the Advent calling, the Advent mission that Christ gave to us? Herein lies the, the secret of how the three angels' messages is being betrayed today in many a church. It is because of people who are there, amen, in key positions, who never received the call of God and have another mission. Amen. amen. And they say the three angels' message is not the only message. Who is Ellen White? They say. And so, Judas was not chosen by God. I will show you who chose Judas. Judas was not recommended by the Spirit to join the ministry as a gospel preacher. Amen. Who encouraged Judas to join the ministry? Read again, Desire of Ages, page 294. The disciples were anxious that Judas should become one of their members. Who was anxious? Is it Jesus? Is it the Holy Spirit? The disciples, the eleven, uh, were anxious that Judas should, be, should become one of their members or he should also join the apostleship. He was of commanding appearance, a man of keen discernment and executive ability. And they commended him to Jesus as one who would greatly assist him in his work. They were surprised that Jesus received Judas so coolly. Neither welcomed him, nor repulsed him. He only said, the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Foxes have holes, beds have nests. Having read the heart of Judas, that this brother has joined the ministry, he has taken up this position for material benefit and for status. So that statement was meant to discourage Judas from joining. But the disciples urged uh, you know, his name upon Christ and strongly recommended that, please, Judas should be one of us. Are you with me? There are lessons to be learned here. When we go into those nominating committees, don't argue with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Let him do his will. Ours is to submit. Amen. Don't bring names prescribed. Amen. And to urge them upon the nominating committees to take certain names. Let the Holy Spirit indicate who should be where. Amen. So they urged upon Jesus. Judas should be included. They presented their reasons and arguments. It says now, uh, I carry on, Desire of Ages 2.94. Had Jesus repulsed Judas, the disciples would have questioned in their own minds the wisdom of Jesus. <laughs> they would have doubted whether Christ was the real Messiah. For Judas was a popular young man in the community where Peter and the like grew up. They knew him as a young man, 
sharp, intelligent, am I right? And they strongly recommended him to Jesus. Had Jesus rejected Judas openly, they were ready to doubt whether he was the Messiah or not. And we read, for their sake, he allowed Judas in the circle that they might learn a lesson. There are some brothers whom we urge to take up certain positions in the house of God. And God, seeing our stubbornness, allows us to do our will so that we may learn a lesson. Through those brothers, am I right? When their characters will be revealed, as the character of Judas was revealed later on. And the disciples learned never again to argue with Jesus. Never again to edge names before Jesus. How many of us are edging names? How many of us are wiser than Jesus? <laughs> the history of Judas would show them the danger of allowing any worldly consideration to have weight in deciding the fitness of men to work for God. The cooperation of such men as the disciples were anxious to secure would have betrayed their work into the hands of its worst enemies by including Judas in, this, in the circle against the will of God. The disciples were betraying their work into the hands of its worst enemies. In these last days, brothers and sisters, I want to warn you, we are in danger of brethren and sisters who are not of God's calling, handing over the cause of Christ into the hands of its enemies. Are you with me? We are in danger of certain brothers drawing the church to an ecumenical spirit. Somebody listening to me. We are in danger, brethren, of hearing Pentecostal sentiments within our circles. Is somebody listening? Why? Church politicking. Because of connections in the nominating committee who urge names of friends and relatives and uncles to come in. Men, we have not been called by God. What decisions can they make in our church boards that will benefit this church? I'm giving you the profile of Judas. I've told you how he came into the ministry, not by God's will. <laughs> can I ask you a question? Are you in the house of God by God's will? How did you come in? Why did you come? Those who are in, who were called by Christ, were called for mission. As Jesus called the eleven for a mission of soul winning. If we see you doubting and hating the gospel commission, am I right? Then we know you were not called in by Christ. All those who were called were called to be fishers of men. Somebody say amen, please. Amen. You know them by their fruit. Ellen White says there are some people who have no more burden for souls, just like a drunkard in the beer garden. No burden. Pastor Judas had no burden for souls. Elder Judas had no burden for souls. He had another burden, securing high position. That's why he came into the circle of the disciples. He has another profile of Judas. Desire of Ages, page 717. Judas was highly regarded by the disciples, but not by Christ, and had great influence over them. He himself had a, had a high opinion of his own qualifications. You did not hear that. Judas had a high opinion of his own Qualifications, and he looked upon his brethren as greatly inferior to him in judgment and ability. He accused them of not seeing their opportunities, he thought, and not taking advantages of circumstances. 
the church would never prosper with such short-sighted men as Peter, John, James, and the like, according to Judas. Judas summed up all the disciples and flattered himself that the church would often be brought into confusion and embarrassment, embarrassment if it were not for his ability as a manager. Judas regarded himself as the capable one who could not be overreached. In his own estimation, he was an honor or an asset to the church. And as such, he always represented himself. Judas came in and called by God with another mission. Amen? Smuggled through the disciples' nominating committee, having been politicked into a certain position. Amen? Now he started to reveal his true character. He felt a superiority complex above all the church members, above all the apostles, above all the pastors, above all the elders, above all the church boards. Are you with me? He felt he was the only one qualified. Everybody else was not qualified to do God's work. He felt himself the only one qualified to preach, the only one qualified to do anything in the church and everybody else inferior. Do we have people like that in the house of God who feel they are qualified? Without them, the church would die. Who view themselves as assets for the church? These are the Judas type. Amen? This is arrogance and proud, I mean, and pride. Are you with me? And the God never works with such. For he says, humble yourself and he will. Where did Judas get this kind of mindset? Remember yesterday? Lucifer, the first church politician. You said in your heart, I will ascend above all the angels. I will ascend above the stars. I will be like God. So when the devil fell into this earth, he came to look for men to recruit in his own image and after his own likeness. And the Judas is one of the recruits. I want to be above my fellow brothers to have the highest seat. Am I right? I, Lucifer said, I'm the only one who is able to bring real happiness in heaven. God's laws are unfair. And Judah says, I am the only one qualified to see this church successful. Peter, you're not qualified. James, you're not. Uh, Matthew and the like, you are inferior, guys. How many people have been aging their qualifications upon others? If you don't study the word of God, you may think they are men of God. But if you study the spirit of prophets and the word of God, they are the Judas type. Exactly in the footsteps of Judas. As the devil accused the two thirds. Am I right? Judas accused the other disciples on, of inferiority. Good for nothing. Are you with me? How can the Holy Spirit of God come upon us in the form of the latter rain if we indulge in this mindset of Judas Iscariot? The Bible says, let each man esteem the other as better than himself. Not so with the mind of Judas. I'm the only one who is qualified. All of you are unqualified. He, is an, he had an exaggerated sense of his self-importance. An exaggerated sense of his own abilities. Am I right? I have seen people somewhere who end up running the church as if it's their backyard, back, you know, backyard, as if they own it. Am I right? Judas was that type of a person. I will tell you more. It says, when Jesus said to stop arguments among the disciples, somebody was trying to divert the disciples to another agenda to which Christ did not call them. I have called you for soul winning. I've called you for the three angels' messages. Amen? 
I have called you to take the gospel to all the corners of the earth. Judah said another mission. Church politically. Accusing the brethren. And Jesus said to put out fires among the disciples. Who is the greatest among us? Listen to this. Luke 9 verse 46. Luke 9 46 says, An argument started among the disciples as to which of them would be the greatest. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, took a little child and had him stand before, beside him. Then he said to them, Whoever welcomes this little child in my name welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. For it is the one, for it is the one who is least among you who shall be the greatest. And the spirit of prophet says, it is Judas who introduced the argument. Who is the greatest amongst us? Because this guy came into the church, came into the ministry, came into the uh, 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 position of responsibility, focusing on high position. So he wanted to make sure everybody agreed that he was himself the greatest. He was the one who was qualified above everyone else. And Jesus said to stop the argument. Guys, the greatest among you should be like this little child. So Christ was trying to turn the attention of the disciples to humility. Let this man be in you, which was also in Christ, who was, who did, who, who was equal with God, but never thought that equality with God is something to be grasped. He humbled himself, made himself of no reputation, took the form of a servant to serve. Amen. Amen. So Christ was diverting the minds of his disciples back to what he called them for, to be servicemen of God. And the Judas wanted to divert them who is the greatest. To me, that's part of uh, politicking for high positions. Whoever is lasting for any position in the church, I see you as a Judas type. Among us. <laughs> In the church of God, I don't care who you are, what your title is. Are you, me? are you with me? I don't care what papers you hold, how educated you are. Those who are truly educated are as humble as Jesus. Amen. Those who have been falsely educated are as proud as Lucifer. And are the Judas type, focusing on high positions. When our master focused on low positions... One guy kept on saying, who is the greatest? And he convinced all of them that they were inferior. And he made them believe that he was the greatest. He made them believe they were good for nothing. And he made them believe that he was the only one in asset. If the church of Christ was to be successful, it had to depend on Judas. And Jesus humbly corrected that position. So can you see as G Judas walked with Christ, his influence among the disciples, to divert them from mission. Amen. Amen. To divert them from their calling. Amen. Amen. No wonder why not much souls were won during Judah's time. We see more souls act of the apostles when Judas was gone. Because the disciples were preoccupied with politicking for positions. As Judas harassed them. Am I right? Why are we not preaching the three angels' messages effectively? What's preoccupying us? What's our burden? If we're going to pray for revival, is it? Let's just, no, let's, let's not just talk about revival and pray for it. We have to correct certain things. Amen. Amen. To repent from certain habits and thought patterns and lifestyles in the house of God. If you are a Judas type and you won't repent, I tell you, the church will be successful after you are gone. I'm coming to it. After you are gone, the church will grow fast. There will be big baptisms after you are gone. <laughs> Judas, the apostle who loved money. Desire of Ages, page 716. Judas had, had naturally a strong love for money. But he had not always been corrupt enough to do such a deed as this. He had fostered the evil spirit of greediness 
until it had become the ruling motive of his life. The love of money overbalanced his love for Christ through becoming the slave of one vice he gave himself to Satan to be given, to be driven to any length in sin. But Judas did not come to the point of surrendering himself to Christ. He did not give up his worldly ambition or, or his love of money. While he accepted the position of a minister of Christ, he did not bring himself under the divine molding. He felt that he would retain his own judgment and opinions and he cultivated a disposition to criticize others and to accuse them. Judas came into the ministry for two things. High position and the cash. Did you hear what I said? His burden was not the three angels. His burden was not so winning. He came into the church, edged himself unbidden. He saw a door of opportunity for making money by aspiring to be an apostle. His friends, blind to his motives, urged him to be taken as one of the leaders. Brothers and sisters, God allowed Judas to come into the circle for the sake of the disciples to learn. Amen. Amen. Never ever prescribe names to Jesus. He is the owner of the church. He died for it. He knows who fits where. You don't know anything. I told you about the Amen Committee yesterday, is it? Those who just say Amen. is one or two are mesmerizing them and dominating them. Am I right? Never again should you listen to a man in any nominating committee aging a name prescribing. Let every man be persuaded in his mind. Pray to the Lord as he convicts you. Choose a person. Don't say because so and so said, therefore so and so will do. You never know the connections. Somebody may be an advocate of a friend or somebody out there. And that is how Judas got into the circle of the disciples. So it says Judas, as Jesus taught other disciples, they were being molded after Christ's likeness. Judas retained his own judgment and opinions independent of all the teachings of Christ. Do you get what I'm saying? He never bothered about what Christ was saying. As Christ taught humility to be as humble as a child, Judas dismissed it. He remained focused on high position and money. It is so sad to say Judas underwent a theological course of three and a half years together with other disciples. Their lecturer, Professor Jesus Christ. The 11 changed into Christ likeness. And the one remained as he was. Hardened forever. Brothers, just being a member of the church is not enough. You never heard me there. Just being a member of this church is not enough. On top of that, yield to the teachings of Christ. Be molded after Christ likeness. There are those who have been in the church for years. They are still the same persons they were even before they came into the church. While others are changing and are being molded, they are becoming worse and worse and worse. So was Judas. All the three and a half years of theological training at the feet of Jesus were wasted. Amen? Judas knew all the hermeneutics. Judas knew all the homiletics. Judas knew all the Hebrew and the Greek. But he was not changed in character by all that knowledge. Amen? While the eleven were changing, he was being molded after the likeness of Satan. This story was written as a warning to the final day church. Some are changing by grace. Are you the same man? Are you the same woman? Yield to Christ. I am told in one place there was a plan to have the Lord's communion. 
And uh, the elder in that place had suggested that he was going to be away. So the other elders organized the Lord's communion without the knowledge of the first elder. Unfortunately, his trip to go to some place, he was not successful to go. He happened to come back on this particular Sabbath and discovered that some of his brethren had organized this Lord's Supper without his knowledge. Uh, he, He flew into a rage. Why do you do this without my knowledge? And he kicked the Holy Communion utensils. Why did you do this in my absence? There are those who have come to think that they now own this church. The owner is the Christ. The owner is the Christ. And the people were disgusted that day and embarrassed, but I understand that elder a, a, a few weeks later stroke hit him, paralyzed. If you think you are too qualified for the church, my Lord will humble you one of these days. He came and aged with an agenda of greatness, high position, love of money. Deserve ages, page 717 says, Judas, an apostle who appointed himself to be treasurer. Did you hear that? He was not appointed to be the treasurer of the group. He edged these qualifications and he proved that, look, I'm the only one who's qualified to do accounts and balance the figures. Peter, can you? A simple fisherman. (laughs) You a tax collector. You are inferior, every one of you. I am qualified to handle finances. And he landed on the bag, financial bag, and he carried it. (laughs) He rigged his way to that position. Let's read spiritual prophecy comment, deserve ages. As treasurer for the disciples, he was called upon to provide for the needs of the little company and to relieve the necessities of the poor. But while listening daily to the lessons of Christ and witnessing to his unselfish life, Judas indulged in covetous disposition. The small amounts of money that came into, the ha- into his hands were a continual temptation to him. Often when he, had a little se- when he did a little service for Christ or devoted a little time, maybe for, for religious purposes or Bible studies, he paid himself out of the little fund. <laughs> In his own eyes, these pretexts where I've worked for God He served to excuse his action, but in God's sight, he was a thief. Pastor Judas came to steal church money. Somebody say amen. Amen. Elder Judas joined the ministry to steal money. That's why he came. His focus was not on mission, but on material gain and status. He was the only one who was driving the latest car. And the other 11 had no car. Just trying to put it into context. (laughs) He was the only one who was dressing very nicely. Exquisite suits and costumes. When everybody dressed poorly. He was taking from the bag. Money that was meant for evangelism. He diverted to his own purposes. When the auditors came to look at the figures, audit, they they proclaimed everything to be a disclaimer. You know a disclaimer? Figures in shambles, lots of theft here. We need a police investigation into this kind of thing. After auditing the, 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 the finances of Judas, are you with me? I want to know why are you in this church? (laughs) Did you come for high position? Or the love of money? There were many financial scandals behind the name of of Judas. And Jesus knew it. And he volunteered to carry the bag. And he kept on taking there. Justifying himself. I did Bible study, so I think that must be 5,000 rand. (laughs) He calculated the time he spent there and he paid himself. 
when the disciples would want to go evangelizing, Judas would say, there's no money, guys. <laughs> the people are not giving. Is somebody listening? Yeah. How many Judas type of men do we have today? How much funds have gone missing? Unaccounted for. Which were meant to facilitate the work of soul winning. Judas and the three angels. Judas is dead. But his ghost is haunting many. Today. Matthew chapter 26. The reason why the three angels' messages is not prospering could it be because of the Judas type of personnel among us? Men with another mission. Men with another focus. Men with another burden. <laughs> Are you with me? Matthew 26, verse 6 says, While Jesus was in Bethany in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume which she poured on his head as he was reclining on the table. And when the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste, they asked. This perfume could have been sold at a high price, and the money given to the poor. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, why are you bothering this woman? The comments of the spirit of prophets say, it is Judas who whispered among the disciples, what a waste. This oil or perfume was imported. Immediately he calculated the monetary value of the, of the oil in the perfume and he saw several millions. And he said, what a waste, what a waste. And everybody said, what a waste, what a waste. <laughs> what a waste. Judas considered giving precious things to Jesus a waste. Judas told the other disciples that giving millions to Christ is a waste. That is why today evangelism is being starved today. No means for soul winning. No means for big campaigns. Am I right? Because Judas hates to see fans poured at the feet of Jesus. Are you a Judas tonight? Where are you pouring your fans? Everywhere else except at the feet of Jesus. Jesus had the real challenge. When we first take some brothers, smuggle them through the nominating committees to occupy key positions, the church suffers. Are you with me? The church is bewildered with many problems. The problems were not coming from the 11 who were called by Christ. They were coming from one who was not called, but was put by men in the circle. Can I speak very plainly here? An elder who has not been called by God is a problem in the church. A Dorcas leader who has not been called by God is problematic. So is a pastor who has not been called by God, he gives a headache to the people. But the, the, the 11 who were called, <laughs> they are a blessing. Jesus said, let them grow together. The wheat and the tares will separate them at the time of harvest. Before we pray for revival, let's know what our sin is and repent from it. Let's allow God to do his will. Let him appoint whomever he wills. Amen? Amen? When David was appointed to be king, nobody thought he could be king. Even Eli, I mean the, the priest Samuel, thought the elder brothers could be. But God said, no, God does not look as, uh, the way, he does not see the way men see you look at appearance. You look at externals, but I look into the heart. All the guys you think are right, I have rejected them. There's a little guy there tending sheep, call him. And when he came, the Shekinah glory shined on his face. And God said, anoint that one. The way we think is not the way God thinks. Matthew 26. Verse 14, then one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, what are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? 
So they counted out for him 30 pieces of silver. From then onward, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. That's why he joined the ministry. Not to win souls. <laughs> to hand over Christ. To hand over the mission of Christ to its enemies. Are you with me? Somebody said, look, this was the first infiltration into the church of God. Satan had an agent that he put in the circle of this infant church. This Sabbath-keeping church that Christ was forming, the devil put one there to represent his cause and to fight Christ from within. I want to ask you a question. Has the devil repented now? Do we still have one Judas among us? Now there are many more Judases. There are so many of them now. Amen. Because the devil knows his time is short. He doesn't want to see a single saint going to Christ to advance the cause of the three angels' messages. Are you with me? When Jesus says the laborers are few, the, the fields are ripening, Judas says no, downsize the pastors. Downsize the workers. Are you with me? We are having too many campaigns here and there. Stop these campaigns. We need more campaigns. We need more baptisms. Is somebody listening to me? We need even more to train more gospel workers. Both clergy and lay. Am I right? That all may bring souls bringing in the sheaves. What will you give me if I hand him over to kill this work, to kill his work, to kill his mission? What will you give me? Judas was a man who had two salaries, <laughs> two pay slips, one from the treasury of the, of the bag that he carried. He paid himself. Then he was also receiving handouts from the enemies of Christ. What will you give me? He came into the ministry for money. Collecting without and within. Can you see the facts, my brothers? Yeah. I, I want to conclude now. <laughs> One day Jesus said, in um, John chapter 6, verse 70, Jesus said, Have I not chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? The son of man ended up speaking truth as it is. One of you <laughs> is a what? A devil. And is that one who was not called. He kept on developing his character into devil likeness. He became mature in Satan's character. Amen? When the devil's character was matured in him, then he betrayed him. And Christ was nailed on the cross. And he died a cruel death. And the disciples were shocked for the first time to see the man whom they had advocated to take up the ministry. Doing this to the master. And Jesus said in his heart, I wanted you to know this. That's why I, was, I neither repulsed him nor welcomed him. I knew his heart. But you did not know. Amen? Amen. And Jesus died. And Judas became a gospel minister with blood in his hands. And Jesus said, woe unto that man. It were better if he had not been born. Yeah. And he died in shame. And the disciples learned their lesson. Let us learn our lessons as we go into those nominating committees. Allow God to do his will. For all the trouble that the church faces, some brothers who advocated for funny names to take up positions will give an account on the judgment day. They were not urged by the spirit to speak, but by human attachment. Friendship, connections, they urged the friends to take positions of responsibility. And they started to work against Christ from within, from the church board, from those uh, whatever committees to attack Christ. It decelerated his work. When Judas was gone, I want to, you know, he betrayed him with a kiss, eh? A, a, an apostle with false love. Um,
Acts chapter 2 is a good record that I love. It's a good uh, po I mean, uh, uh, point to, to conclude our, past, our message. Acts chapter 2 verse 1 going down what says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one. For the first time when Judas was God, there was one accord among the disciples. Nobody saying who is the greatest. No one saying I'm more qualified than you. Amen. For the first time, they were of one arm. Accord in one place, there was a season of prayer there. Am I right? Verse 2 Suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak other tongues or languages as the Spirit gave them utterance. When Pastor Judas was gone, when Elder Judas was gone, amen. When the head deacon Judas was gone, order came into the church. They spoke one language, so winning. They fasted for the Holy Spirit to come that they may win souls. Amen. And each one of them received a feeling of the Holy Spirit. And then began the acts of the apostles. Friends, if we are going to have a second Pentecost, we must come to a place of one accord where there will be no Judas among us. So shall the three angels' messages be concluded on a high note when nobody will be striving for greatness, but everybody striving to be a servant, a serviceman. The Lord will recognize the humility of his people with a special baptism. But Judas is to go first. Are you the man who has to go first before this happens? Are you the woman who has to go first? I wish you could be part of the group. Amen. May the Lord our God help us as we consider this message. We are going to conclude again with a season of prayer. Lord, count me among the remnant workers. Lord, help me not to develop a Judas type of character. Teach me to be content with any position that, that you offer me to save you. Amen. And help me, Lord, to be a blessing to your church. We are going to pray in twos. Uh, we are going to pray for a special revival. If any person needs to confess anything, perhaps you have been involved in church politics, you have been coveting this position, that position, it's time to say, Lord, forgive me. I don't want to walk in the steps of Judas. Those who are in positions, by God's will, God bless you. Don't lose heart. When God has appointed you, do your work faithfully. Amen. We are only saying do not campaign for a particular position. Let God choose you there. And when he calls you, he will sustain you there. Amen. There's the chorus that sings for us, sweet hour of prayer. Just one stanza. We shall go in twos. Pray for yourselves. Pray for the church. We need a revival in the global church. Amen.